Welcome to our CPD, a guide to specifying 20mm porcelain tiles. This continuing professional development seminar is presented by Blueprint Ceramics and certified by the CPD Certification Service. Before we start the CPD presentation itself, we would like to provide a little further background information on Blueprint Ceramics. Blueprint Ceramics are at the forefront of the industry and are driven to bring the most innovative cutting-edge tile ranges to our clients. We can do this through our established long-standing relationships with manufacturers across the globe, from Europe and the Far East. We take time to source each range and display some of these at trade exhibitions year on year. This allows us the opportunity to showcase them and meet with industry professionals. Blueprint have an extensive project portfolio where we have worked with many architects, property developers, contractors and interior designers. Our ranges are extensive and diverse. This allows us to satisfy any project requirement. The vast array of tiles that we supply include ceramic and porcelain tiles, metal and glass mosaics, travertine and natural stone. The designs range from traditional to contemporary, including some unique standout collections. Some of our clients include River Island, Hilton Hotels and Primark. Blueprint have a dedicated team of professionals that enable the process of specifying tiles to be a straightforward task from start to finish. Experts can advise and assist through the sales process and the logistics department makes sure orders are delivered on time and on budget to ensure projects can flow with ease. Blueprint Ceramics are the go-to company in the world of tile specification. Here are some examples of the high-end finishes on projects we have supplied tiles for. Following our introduction to Blueprint Ceramics, we will now commence with the CPD seminar itself. This seminar explores the issues that need to be considered when specifying 20mm porcelain tiles. The learning objectives of today's seminar are to understand the characteristics of 20mm porcelain tiles, consider their potential uses, understand factors to consider when selecting and specifying, appropriacy for different applications, Understanding issues to consider relating to slip resistance. This seminar covers What is a porcelain tile? Characteristics of 20mm porcelain tiles. Potential uses of 20mm porcelain tiles. Installation solutions. Specials. Slip resistance. A guide to aftercare and maintenance. Regulations and Standards Case Studies A summary of what we have covered and signposting to further learning materials. What is a porcelain tile? Porcelain is a tile manufactured from natural clay. A porcelain tile is created by heating more refined clay to higher temperatures, creating a denser tile that can be used indoors and outdoors. Typically, a porcelain tile for internal use would be 10 mm thick. Today's presentation discusses the much stronger and more versatile 20 mm thick porcelain tile that can be used both internally and externally and can deliver exciting design opportunities. Characteristics of 20 mm porcelain tiles 20 mm thick porcelain tiles offer exceptional opportunities and numerous applications and an alternative to external paving for outdoor use. This is due to its characteristics that include resistance to thermal shocks, breaks, chemical attacks and stains. They are easy, light and safe to clean, install, remove, use and enjoy. 20mm porcelain tiles have excellent mechanical strength. A typical 20mm thick tile has a breaking strength of circa 11,000 newtons, compared with 2,500 newtons for a 10mm thick porcelain tile. It also gives resistance to heavy loads. 
they offer good slip resistance according to the pendulum test value, PTV. They are easy to clean and require limited maintenance. They offer frost resistance as they have extremely low water absorption. They are resistant to thermal shock and severe temperature changes. They are also fire resistant. 20 mm porcelain tiles are also hygienic, making them resistant to bacteria and mould. Resistant to chemicals, acids and salt. Can be driven on when applied to a screed. Colour stable, which means they do not fade over time or through use. Due to durability and manufacturing process, porcelain tiles have good eco-credentials and when finished with can be downcycled at end of life cycle. Aesthetically exciting and can be combined with interior flooring for a continuous look. Potential uses of 20mm porcelain tiles. Potential applications include domestic, commercial, health, education, hospitality, indeed suitable for all sectors, with applications including parking areas, green paths and landscaping projects, swimming pools, both internal and external, external terraces and balconies, areas of high footfall, industrial areas requiring flooring resisting heavy loads and or resistance to acids and chemical agents. Here are some examples of locations for their potential use. Swimming pools. Gardens and landscaping. Terraces and balconies. Areas of high footfall. Industrial areas. Installation and laying solutions. We will now discuss the four main laying solutions for 20mm porcelain tiles. Laying on grass. Raised insulation. Installation on gravel or sand. Installation on screed with adhesive. Always refer to manufacturer's details for permitted use and specific installation recommendations. They may be laid on grass as garden stepping stones. They are easy to lay, adjust and move, making them ideal for parks and private gardens. To install, remove 5 to 8 centimetres of soil. Place a fine layer of gravel, grain size 3 to 6 centimetres, and compact substrate. Lay the surface of the tile in line of turf to avoid damaging lawn mowers.
they may also be dry laid onto gravel. This is an ideal solution for projects where permanent floor laying is not possible. Again, this method makes them easy to lay, adjust, and move. And laying on gravel ensures correct soil drainage through the gaps between the slabs, allowing water to drain off into the ground. For raised installation, such as with balconies and terraces, a pedestal support system is a suitable method of installation. Features of this method of installation include: support legs need to sit on a perfectly waterproof substrate base. There is the potential for water stagnation on top of tiles. Therefore, it is recommended to allow three millimeters minimum joints for drainage. Adjustable proprietary pedestal legs allow for potential of perfectly flat or slight fall for drainage, which is recommended. Services, wiring, etc., can run in the void hidden below the tiles. Tiles can be lifted for maintenance inspection.
Parking areas and locations bearing heavy loads require an installation direct to screed using adhesive. This system requires a homogeneous layer of adhesive. In external installations, the recommended joint width should be five millimeters minimum. The size and position of concrete expansion joints need to be identified, as tile joints must correspond with expansion joints in terms of size and location. Expansion joints are required around fixed elements such as walls and columns, etc. There is a vast range of specials to complement 20mm porcelain tile ranges, including low walls, steps and risers, copings and edges, borders, channels and grids, corners and edges, benches and seats, covers and surrounds, and flower boxes. Here are some close up examples of specials, including edgings, channels, Coping, steps and risers. Tactile tiles. Recommendations from the RNIB and the Centre for Accessible Environments, CAE, led to the use of tactile tiles as warning features for stairs, ramps and platforms. The Cordroy profile is designed to warn visually impaired people of the presence of specific hazards. Such a profile is foot braille and is a warning association with steps, ramps, etc. The Cordroy profile is an internationally accepted tactile surface that conveys the message of hazard and implies proceed with caution. Tactile tiles. The blister profile is designed to warn visually impaired people of the edge of all off-street platforms. The profile consists of a series of flat-topped dome studs. Slips don't just happen. One or more factors usually play a part in any accident. The slip resistance of a tiled floor finish is the most important safety consideration. 
effective and suitable slip-resistant characteristics will reduce the likelihood of slipping. Slip resistance of a floor depends on many factors. The roughness of the tile surface, the environment it is in, whether it is wet or dry when in use, the footfall and wear characteristics of the tile, cleaning and maintenance. Tests for slip resistance. The main two slip resistance tests that are carried out on floor tiles are the ramp test and the pendulum test, which we will discuss further. Other tests include the tortoise test, a micro roughness test, and a sled test. In the interests of time, we shall only go into further detail on the tests that are by far the most prevalent in the ceramic flooring industry. Blueprint Ceramics also have a separate, specific CPD seminar, which goes into greater detail on the issue of slip resistance. The Pendulum Test. This test measures dynamic coefficient of friction, COF. The test is designed to replicate a pedestrian heel strike, the point at which most slips occur. When a pedestrian heel strikes a wet floor, a fluid film is created between them. This can cause a slip. This test works in wet conditions because it generates a similar fluid film between the slider and the floor. It can be used to accurately test the slip potential on clean and dry or contaminated floors. The test also works with dry contaminants. This is HSE's preferred method of testing because it is portable and works in the conditions that the slip accidents happen. Understanding pendulum test data. Based on recommendations from the HSE, you should use floor finishes that achieve a Pendulum 4S slider 96 of 36 plus for shod foot areas and or a Pendulum TRL slider 55 of 36 plus for wet barefoot areas to achieve a low slip potential environment. Good practice suggests using a structured tile with Pendulum 4S slider 96 of 40 plus for external floor areas and Pendulum TRL slider 55 of 40 plus for wet barefoot areas due to the possible slight variation from tile to tile and possible cleaning and maintenance regimes. Pendulum test summary. The pendulum can be used in real workplace conditions. It allows you to easily compare clean and contaminated floors. The test measures dynamic COF, for example, how people walk. Different sliders are used to simulate shod and barefoot conditions. If the pendulum is not set up and operated correctly, the data may be misleading. It is recommended operators work to UK SRG guidelines. This is HSE's preferred method of testing because it is accurate, portable and works in the conditions that slip accidents happen. The HSE has deemed that for assessing slip resistance, the pendulum test score is accurate, robust and valid. The tests are also performed in the locations where the slipping is likely to happen. To assist professionals and non-professionals alike in determining the suitability of a surface, the HSE have developed an online tool called the Slips Assessment Tool, SAT. This can be found via the HSE's government website. This tool assists users who can input their own measurements to determine the risk of slipping in a particular area. Choosing the right cleaning method. To effectively remove contaminants, the correct cleaning regime needs to be chosen. Consider the following options when choosing the cleaning technique and always follow specific manufacturer's recommendations. Detergent, spot cleaning, mopping, sweeping brush, Hose or power washer. Squeegee. Wet vacuum cleaner. Dry vacuum cleaner. Scrubber dryer machines. Maintaining floor finishes. The two main factors that affect the performance of a floor finish are wear resistance and surface contaminants. Wear resistance. Of all the floor finishes available to the commercial specifier, Porcelain tiles have the greatest wear resistance. 
correctly specified and installed porcelain tiles would be expected to last the lifetime of the building. The slip-resistant characteristics of a porcelain tile are maintained with the implementation of a suitable cleaning regime. Surface contaminants. Areas subject to expected surface contaminants should incorporate the use of suitably slip-resistant floor tiles. The degree of slip resistance changes with the predicted contaminant. For example, water as a contaminant has less of an effect on slip resistance than gear oil or margarine. Always refer to specific manufacturer's recommendations. Builders clean should be undertaken prior to floor being used. The builders clean removes excess grouts or cements and residual film left over from the grouting process and is therefore a one-off cleaning process. It is important that this is carried out thoroughly, as any grout residues left will act as a key for dirt. Cementitious grout clean. The use of a mild acid decementing solution, followed by thorough rinsing clean, will remove all but the most stubborn of cement residues. Epoxide grout clean. All residues from the grouting process should be removed from the tile's surface before the resin cures. If this is not done, it will become a very difficult and expensive cleaning process using gel-type epoxide remover. Periodic deep cleaning. Foreign matter may cause more stubborn surface marks on tiles. If the surface mark cannot be removed with the normal cleaning procedures detailed above, other cleaning materials should be considered. Regulations and standards. A number of regulations and standards to be considered when specifying and installing 20 mm porcelain tiles. This is a reference summary. Rather than going into detail on each standard, it is far from exhaustive, but a useful guide. Here are some case study examples. This project is a domestic pathway. Before, the pathway was made up of faded paving slabs. After, a sharp, crisp, neat look is achieved, and the pathway is easily maintainable. Here is an installation in a residential garden. Before, the garden featured a shabby wooden terrace and faded paving slabs. After, the space was transformed with a sharp, crisp, neat, and easy-to-maintain terrace, patio, and stepping stone pathway. This case study features a private dwelling, including swimming pool, pathways, stepping stones, and an external terrace. This dwelling uses Contesto, a collection of porcelain stoneware suitable for both walls and floors, inspired by the amalgamation of marble, stone, and terracotta fragments. This range offers up versatile, lightweight, large format slabs, traditional porcelain stoneware tiles. And a 20 mm outdoor solution. This case study features a private dwelling terrace using natural wood effect porcelain that can flow from inside to out in a seamless transition. This beautiful natural wood effect porcelain collection offers tones of the forest with charming knots and grooves that make this collection look as real as it gets. An example of an installation in a high footfall area. Is this shopping centre in Italy? 20 mm porcelain tiles were chosen due to high footfall, ease of clean and maintenance, longevity, and safety with slip resistance. Another installation example of 20 mm porcelain tiles in a location where a high level of cleanliness is required is this hospital medical centre located in Switzerland. In today's CPD seminar, we have covered. The characteristics of 20 mm porcelain tiles. Considered their potential uses. Given consideration to factors when selecting and specifying appropriate laying of tiles for different applications. Considered issues relating to slip resistance. Understood aftercare and maintenance requirements. Identified relevant regulations and standards. Further study and learning. For further sources of information on today's seminar, and as a source of further study and learning, please refer to the websites shown on the slide. 
If you have any further queries, please do not hesitate to contact the Blueprint Ceramics team. Thank you for watching A Guide to Specifying 20mm Porcelain Tiles.